MG Midget is all about fun. It's a simple, cheap little car that promises open top thrills which it delivers in spades. It's a story that spans seven decades from its humble roots in Oxfordshire to a world-beating car that conquered America. It was loved by weekend tinkerers, American GIs coming home from the war, and F1 racers. This is the MG Midget story. The story starts way back in 1928 with the original midget, the M-Type. Morris Garages, or MG for short, produced an affordable, open-top, two-seater sports car that grabbed the public's imagination, and its affordability was a key selling point during the recession of the early 1930s. It was superseded very quickly by the J-Type and the P-Type. These were discontinued by 1936, and the MG T-Type that was already produced was badged with a midget name. The T-Type was so popular that production started up again after the Second World War and Morris started exporting them to North America. Despite being right-hand drive only, they sold well, with approximately 80% of them going to the USA by the early 1950s. Selling to ex-GIs who'd seen them in the UK during the war helped Britain's battered economy with useful export orders. Morris went on to sell over 50,000 T-Types, but despite the new MGTF bringing in a significant styling update in 1953, the T-Type was starting to look dated. It was discontinued in 1955 to be replaced by the venerable MGA, which was pricier and larger, so the midget name didn't quite seem appropriate. But if you want a new T-Type today, you can still buy one. A Malaysian company, TD Cars, bought the rights to produce the car in 1998, releasing the TD2000. It features classic styling, but uses a modern steel chassis, fiberglass body, and a modern Toyota engine. The MG name was now owned by the British Motor Corporation, or BMC, and they saw a way to capitalize on the midget name with their Austin Healey Sprite. Austin had started a relationship with a Healey Motor Company run by motorsport legend Donald Healey. Their first car, the Austin Healey 100, had been very successful, and they thought a smaller car would be a good follow-up. They designed the Sprite around BMC's Austin A35, with Morris Minor steering thrown in. The Sprite had been introduced in 1958 and was already being produced at the Abingdon factory in Oxford where previous MG midgets had been manufactured. It was a cute looking frog-eyed little car, like a 1950s Renault Twingo. It had its quirky features, such as no door handles or boot lid. The owner was expected to reach into the car to open it and to lower the seat backs to reach under the rear deck a process likened to spelunking or potholing by many owners. But the Sprite also had its cutting edge features. It was the first volume production sports car to use the body panels as a stressed member of the vehicle, not relying solely on the chassis. So when BMC launched the Mark II Sprite in 1961, they figured they could put the red octagonal MG badge on it and sell it to nostalgic MG fans as a new MG midget especially as many former midget owners had looked to the Sprite as the spiritual successor of the old T-Type midget. BMC figured right, as although the midget was more expensive and well equipped, it sold in equal numbers to the Sprite throughout the 1960s. Customers affectionately called both cars Spridgets, and they grew to love this cheap, fun little open top. Ever since the Sprite launched, BMC raced its Sprites and Midgets to boost sales. Special competition versions were raced in the UK, and in the USA, BMC encouraged racing, where they often competed against Triumph Spitfires. BMC works entries recorded class wings at Sebring, with drivers including Sterling Moss, Bruce McLaren, and Steve McQueen. This helped fuel sales in North America. Export orders for the frog-eyed Sprite had always been strong, with 80% of them being sold outside the UK, and this trend continued. 57% of all MG Midget Mark 1s were sold in North America, and this percentage only increased over time. 
The Sprite Mark II or Midget Mark I was a big upgrade over the original Sprite. Gone were the cute frog-eyed looks, replaced with a more stylish, conventional appearance, and the rear was styled to look like the upcoming MGB. It got a boot lid, so customers could access it without folding down the seats. The same A-Series Austin Mini and future Austin Metro engine was used with an uprated 46 brake horsepower, and it was to get a further boost in 1962 to 56 brake horsepower in reaction to the recently released Triumph Spitfire that was beating it from a standing start to 60 miles an hour. In 1961, BMC started work on the replacement to the midget, codenamed ADO34. This was to use the mini subframe with an open top body styled by Pininfarina and a coupe version was also considered. Making use of the highly successful mini chassis made a lot of sense, as it would reduce the cost of chassis development in the future. It's unclear why, but in 1964, ADO 34 all came to naught and the project was cancelled. Maybe because of the focus on ADO 34, the 1964 Mark II midget wasn't much of an update. The changes that were made were done mainly for the US market where sales were starting to become more and more important. The car received wind-down windows, exterior door handles with locks, fitted carpet, a new windscreen, and an all-new dashboard layout. With the optional hardtop, this was a much more secure vehicle. New rear suspension gave the car much improved ride and handling. As the midget was now competing against the Triumph Spitfire, which was outselling it, these updates helped the MG salespeople in their quest for customers. Tom Charder, designer of such amazing sports cars as the De Tommaso Pantera, my favourite matchbox car when I was a kid, and the Aston Martin Lagonda Coupe, got his start making a restyled Innocente version of the midget in 1961 called the Innocente Spider, with the Innocente C Coupe following in 1966. Sales started well in the Italian domestic market, but export sales were non-existent and production ended in 1968. The Mark III Midget was introduced in 1966 with a larger 1.3 litre engine, a result of Mini Cooper S development. The larger engine gave greater performance, but from 1968, US emission requirements took some of that power away. Customers were a little disappointed that this was a detuned version of the Mini Cooper S engine, but if it had been any faster, it might have beaten the more expensive MGB. Safety measures like a collapsible steering column, rocker switches instead of toggle switches, and a padded dashboard were added for North American models. A simpler but still fiddly soft top was introduced, and finally the seats reclined. Cars destined for Australia were shipped in CKD or completely knocked down kits to be assembled on arrival. This made shipping much cheaper and hence allowed the car to be sold for a more competitive price. Up until this point, competition between BMC and Triumph had been fierce, but in 1968 both companies were merged into British Leyland. Dealers were amalgamated and both models were sold under one roof, giving customers one place to browse the best sports cars Britain had to offer. However, the merger also robbed the midget of any major updates. It's a testament to how good the original 1961 MG Midget was that it continued to sell well around the world without major changes. In 1970, the Mark III was updated with some cosmetic changes on the outside and fabric seating was abandoned in favour of vinyl. In 1971, British Leyland dropped the Austin Sprite variant to focus solely on the MG Midget, which by now was outselling the Sprite and in any case, the cars were now virtually identical. The Midget enjoyed healthy sales in the UK, USA and Canada, plus a few were sold in Japan, but sales in mainland Europe had never been strong. Only 2% of Mark III Midgets had been sold there. Competition was stronger from cars such as the Fiat 124 Spider and X19. In 1974, MG focused all its efforts on the UK and North American markets. Due to the lack of finances of British Leyland, only the minimal resources went into the midget to keep it selling and generating much needed revenue. 
Although more rounded wheel arches appeared in 1972, allowing fatter aftermarket wheels, no other major changes came until 1974 when the new MG Midget 1500 was introduced. This was mainly a reaction to further US emission regulations. British Leyland realized that the old A-series engine was never going to pass without major modifications, so they installed the 1500cc standard SC engine from the Triumph Toledo and Spitfire and coupled it with a Morris Marina gearbox, finally providing synchromesh on all gears. Ugly plastic bumper blocks were added and the ride height was raised, all to comply with new US safety regulations. But it was a much more powerful car, and that helped keep the car selling in large numbers throughout the 1970s. British Leyland decided not to invest further in open-top sports cars and to focus instead on high-volume vehicles. Production ended in 1979 with the last 500 painted jet black to celebrate 50 years since that amazing first 1928 midget. An amazing 355,000 sprites and midgets have been sold. In the USA, open top drivers turned to the Fiat X19 and the Toyota MR2 became a staple pocket rocket. But this wasn't the end. In 1982, Austin Rover investigated reviving the MG midget with the AR6 program. This was an Austin Metro replacement, and an open-top variant was developed as an all-new MG Midget. The all-aluminium car would use the new K-Series engine that was destined for the Rover 200. MGs would finally be coming back to North America. It was an intriguing design, but the project was expensive at over £300 million, and government-run Austin Rover was denied production funding in the austere early 1980s. What we got instead were MG badge versions of the Metro, Maestro and Montego. Although this wasn't the wind in your hair experience customers loved about the midget, at least they didn't get wet when it rained. Customers in the 1980s were lapping up hot hatches like the Volkswagen GTI and Ford Escort XR3i, and cheap fun open tops faded, especially with the high insurance rates that came in for boy racers. The midget did take some form of a comeback in 1995 with the MGF, but this was seen as a replacement from the venerable MGB. In 2002, it was renamed the MGTF in reference to the 1953 MG T-Type TF midget. Rover Group collapsed in 2005, and the assets were bought by Nanjing Automobile Group of China. They restarted production of the MGF, but sales never met expectations and production ceased in 2011. However, the original MG Midget was a top seller. From 1957 to 1979, the Austin Healey Sprite and MG Midget went on to sell over 350,000 vehicles, outselling its rival, the Triumph Spitfire. Quite an achievement for such a plucky little car. If you want to hear more car histories, then hit the subscribe button and don't forget the bell icon to get notifications when they're published. And let me know your experiences of the MG Midget in the comments below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.